memory management. So this one is little complicated. So we uh, follow this very carefully. Okay. So from the beginning, you say we assume uh, that uh, you are buying some items from the shop. Uh, it's very bad winter, okay? And you're bringing items from the shop and keeping in your house. And your kitchen is the working area or main memory area. So there are only you are processing all your items, all the items you bought from the shop, food items. So on, your, on, the, on the desk there, you are making your food very close to the food, right? Some items you have in a storeroom in the same house. Some items you have in the basement. Some items you may have in an external storage area, depending on which item you use very often, right? So likewise, in SAP system or any other system, even in the operating system, whatever you use, whatever is used by CPU very often, CPU would like to keep it very close to itself. But it's very difficult to do that because the area close to CPU is quite an expensive area. You don't have much space. Even in your kitchen, you don't have a very big de desk. You can't have a very big, big desk. You can't have a very big kitchen. So those are expensive areas. So that is the area the CPU wants. So we have little area, a buffer area for the CPU to take uh, data to work with. And then we have some other buffer areas in different, different uh, distances. Okay. So likewise, SAP memory management also has different memory areas or buffer areas okay and also memory areas and also different buffers so using these different buffers and different memory areas sap can manage uh, its activities okay i'll take a scenario now before taking the scenario i will explain what is this, what is the virtual memory uh, normally if suppose i ask you to sort about three uh, three names using your memory, main memory, you will easily sort them. If I say Tom, Kim, Pam, sort them, you will sort them very fast. But if I give you about 100 names and ask you to sort, then you cannot do fast. You have to make use of your of a paper, of paper and pencil, sort it, and take it to your memory, calculate it back there, like that. So likewise, in, in the in the SAP system or in any system, even in the operating system level, uh, the main memory cannot, main memory is not enough. Main memory is expensive, was expensive, right? So uh, you need to have some hard drive space to do some processing, to share the processing area, okay? So we have a small area in the, in the, in the hard drive that is called swap area right so our swap area and the main memory they both together will form virtual memory so the virtual memory is the available memory for sap system i'm talking about only sap i'm not talking about operating system right it has its own way but it, it, you say we allocated about uh, five gig memory to sap so i'm talking about five gig memory and the swap space. So swap space is 10 gig, 10 plus 5 is 15. So that is the virtual memory. Okay. So yeah. in the swap space, mm -hmm. you said like five, and in mm -hmm. this case, for example, you have five uh, gig in the swap space and then five in the virtual memory, right? Mm -hmm. So what, where is the swap memory? Swap is in the hard drive, right? Swap is actually not in the hard drive. I'm using the hard drive space for swapping purposes. It's virtual. Swap file system is not a real file system. I can I cannot do FSCK. You know what is FSCK? File system check. I cannot do. I cannot create new create a swap file system by new FS command because it's not a real file system. It's virtual file system. You are clear about swap, right? Or you want me to explain? Yeah, I can. Okay. 
So now I take an example, I log into one of the Unix systems. So I log into another machine, another machine, right? So I clear the screen. This is a Unix machine. So if I want to see my swap space, I will say swap minus A. So I'm not a super user, so it's not allowing me to, you know, my path is not set for that command. Uh, if I go to USR spin and then type swap, if I have permission, it will show, right? If I have no permission, it won't show, right? So it shows, right? So I want to say, I want to see my swap, how much swap I have. So I will type this uh, user, SAP swap minus S to show the total amount of swap space I have, okay? So I have so much of swap space, okay? So I have so much swap space. If I want to see what device is used for swap space, I can say minus L. Oh, sorry, I can say, oh, I guess who has super user, right? Every time I have to go through, my path is not set for that, right? As a regular user. So my password here, okay, not password. So, so, yeah, I have to set it right. Yeah. Okay, now I will say swap minus uh, a, a, n will show me the the devices I am using for my swap space. I originally had a slice C zero D zero S one. That is the slice. Don't worry about the, uh, the meaning for that. And that is the original. So when I created the we created the Solaris system. This was the swap space. Then later we added another file to the swap space. So to increase the swap space, right? Uh, this swap space, I told you, it's not a real file system. It's actually a virtual file system. In this Unix system, the real file system is UFS. UFS is the real file system, okay? So now what I did is, I will type, um, I will type, uh, say, format. Okay, format command will show me the slices inside a Unix or Solaris, in this case, Solaris uh, partition. So I type format. So I saw the hard drive. So I select the hard drive. This is the hard drive I want to see. Okay, I will go down a little. Okay, so this is the hard drive. So then I went to another screen where I can talk about partition. Right, so I will say I want to see the partitions. How many partitions you have? Which partition is swap? Right, by default, swap partition is first partition. Zero is root, one is swap. Number one is swap. So I will go to partition. Then I have an option to print the partition. So I will print the partition. So swap is one. Okay, this is the partition. I told you it is not available for users, so it is not mounted, it is unmounted. Normally, for users to use, it should be mounted. So it's mountable. This one is unmounted. It's not mounted, right? So swap partition is not used by users. It is used by the system. But it has to mount the swap partition in a temporary mount point, in a mount point. That is why it is mounted on a mount point and shows here, right? But it's actually memory based. Okay. I can show you that. In Unix, the real, in Solaris, the real file system is UFS, I told you, right? If I say df minus h, it will show me all the file systems I have mounted, okay? And if I select minus f, only UFS, 
I want to see only UFS, then I won't see the swap action. So if I say only UFS, I don't see swap. So it's not a real action. It's not a real slice. It's virtual. That is not. That's why it's not showing there, right? So the swap partition you saw there plus the main memory of the computer is the real, real, real what? Uh, real uh, yeah. virtual memory, right? So virtual memory is real memory plus swap. Okay. The virtual memory is divided into two parts. One is local memory. Local memory, all the work processes have some memory, right? That memory is local memory, that is local to the work process. So if I have some information here, this work process will not see. Okay? So these are localized. But I have another one, shared memory. The shared memory is shared by all the work processes. So any work process here can put the put that uh, process, that work process information here. Okay. But it's all we are talking about one instance. So if we have 0, 3 instance and 0, 1 instance, this is belonging to all are belonging to uh, maybe 0, 1 instance. Okay? All work process of one instance. And all these work process are started by the dialogue, sorry, started by the dispatcher. Okay? One dispatcher starts all these work process. So these work process have local memory and also shared memory. Any question here? No. No. So this is the virtual memory, the physical memory, actual physical memory, and the swap space. In the case of uh, Unix, we use swap space. In the case of uh, Windows, they use paging file. Right? Hmm. Even in mainframe, it's allocated. Mainframe? Oh, awesome. So, you, le you learned about WP work process multiplexing. Uh, can you tell me what is work process multiplexing? I remember the name and I forgot it. <laughs> okay, for example, in this example, this user. Okay. Uh, don't worry about this arrow, okay? So I'm taking this example for, uh, forget about this arrow, okay? Uh, this user logs in. So as soon as uh, work process may access one user. Multiple work processing, multiple work process will be involved in doing one SAP transaction. Yeah. So this SAP user, Forget about this arrow, this side, huh? forget about this, if I put the wrong picture. Right? So this user logs in, and whenever this user logs in, the dialog work process is, as, is associated with that work process, with that user. So what will happen is, whenever the user wants to do some work, right, this dialog work process is going to help the user. Okay? Then what happens? Now, all the things this user is working on, okay, will be in this local memory, local memory of the work process. 